ഒരുപാട് ഹൈസാക്കി Actually, I forget to take this lecture just the day before yesterday, ma'am informed me. Uh, okay, so can I start my lecture now? Or? Sure, ma'am. All the participants have already joined, I think so. so. Uh, they'll be joining in the queue, few more will be joining, but ma'am, you can start with the session. Yeah. So, I'm sharing my slides now. Sure, ma'am. Can anyone will face the any network issue because I'm connected with the college network. So sometimes uh, that uh, connection issues is still here. So if you face any difficulties on the connections and my voice, so kindly inform me in my WhatsApp or you call to me on the issue. Okay. So now. I think my slide is visible now. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So thank you, ma'am, for uh, that uh, giving the introduction about me, what I'm doing, uh, what I have done, my PhD and all. Actually, I'm a data scientist and uh, I'm working in that area of uh, how to prepare the data, how to analyze the data, how to visualize the data. And the most important thing uh, with us is that the preparation of the data. Because directly go to that analysis part and directly go for, for the conclusions part, we have to firstly concentrate what with us in a form of data. So that data having a various varieties. Okay. So the data preparation is the process of gathering, combining, structuring and organizing data. So it can be used in a business intelligence. Nowadays, it's a very big deal because we all are working with our online data as well as the offline data. And this uh, data is a huge amount of data. And the database, the database is, uh, is not like a previous screen. It is a very small type of things we are playing with the GBs and all. But now it's a great challenge because we are working with the TV's data and Zota data, beta data type of things. So analyzing this data and preparing this data and for doing the extracting the conclusion part of the data is quite difficult. So this is called a BI. So once we are working with this BI system, 
The BI system is nothing, it is a business intelligence system. How the system wants to become intelligent? We have a raw data, definitely. This raw data will convert into an information part. Then information will convert into a knowledge part. And this particular knowledge is the system can use. So this system is using not only the raw data for any summary generation, for any conclusions and all. They are using the, this knowledge part. So how this knowledge is converted from your raw data to the information, then information to the knowledge, then system become intelligent. So this is the phenomena for that AI is saying that we want to say like that the system become intelligent. But how they will become intelligent? Definitely, they will acquire the knowledge. They can mimic like a human being. They can understand the problems. They can recognize the things. They, then only we can say, this will be achievable by the end problems or a solutions to this. So the, this AI is giving that one the different type of solution. And for this purpose, we want to prepare the data first. So this, our topic is that, how to prepare that data is an important thing. So this data preparation is a process of gathering, combining. Why it is a combining word? Because you don't have a data as a single data. You have a multiple source of data. So this database, previously, just like in a banking system, if you're working with the banking system, then you have the data like a only related data with the bank systems. But once you are working in a one frame or in a very big task, then the heterogeneous source of inputs is coming. And this heterogeneous source of input, this heterogeneous source of input is giving the idea about that the process of this heterogeneous source of inputs is not a uniform way. That's why this combination, the combining work is required. And this gathered inform information we have to present in a better way. Then it is requiring the sum of the preparation on the data. So this data preparation is the most, uh, is the process for firstly, gather the data, then you have to apply the aggregation operation is called. This we are aggregating the different types of uh, data. Then we are structuring the data. Why we want to structure the data? Because the uniformity we have to maintain the data inside of that data base. So this uniformity, how to convert this uniformity is important one. So any many online tools are also available. So Microsoft Teams, Microsoft is giving that tool for that data preparations and they are a service provider. And this is called the ETL tool, Extraction, Transformation and Loading tool. So this Extraction, Transformation and Loading tool is saying that, firstly, we have to concentrate on this E word. This is the extraction. The heterogeneous source of input is playing the important role. So these all are then part of that extraction. Then how to transform this data that into a uniform way? then this transformation tools are an important one. Then finally, you will able to load this data in your database by using a different loading information, different loading operations, different types of technologies involved for the appropriate loading on the that uh, your storage. Okay, But previously, this storage was a secondary storage, like your database. So database management system, the DBMS, was responsible uh, for storing the similar type of OLTP system data. It's called a online transaction processing data. So this o OLTP systems, we are very familiar with the, the 20 years back, this concept is already derived and we handle the data in a database. But now we are working on the one system is called a DSS system. So this DSS system is a decision support system and this decision support system is giving the input for the BI system for taking a better decisions. So this BI system is taking the help from the DSS system and this system uses the OLAP concept, OLAP concept. So this OLAP is nothing, it is an online analytical processing. So the size of that data we are using in that system, OLAP is a very high as compared to the OLTP system. The OLTP system is application oriented and OLAP is your that one is called an analysis or a decision support system. Thanks. So these things we have to study first. Firstly, we have to think the data, how the data is organized in a secondary devices. Okay. And how the data will map. So this uh, one concept uh, nowadays is a very good for the MongoDB. 
So MongoDB is handling that unstructured data. This unstructured data, structured data, or your semi-structured data, all type of data we can play with this MongoDB. And for structured data, we can play with the DBMS concept is as keys. So these things you have to remember for the data preparations point of view. So this data preparation is often referred to as informally as data prep. It is known as the data branding also. So some practitioners use that term in a narrow sense to refer the cleansing, structuring, and transferring the data. So the main component, the main component of this uh, data presentation includes first thing is the data pre-processing task, then profiling task, cleaning task, validations, and the transformation. So all this bunch, if you want to prepare that one uh, package and you are saying that you want to do that the data preparation, so the, what are the features inside of that data preparations have in your data? So this you have to do the data preparation, pre-processing, then profiling, then cleaning of that one, validations and the transformations. So this pre-processing, uh, I have done uh, many uh, small projects on this and uh, in a RICO city also, we did a, um, one type of analysis. So I will explain each and every terminologies with the case study point of view. So case study I will derive uh, for the 15 to 20 minutes. Ago. Then this uh, data cleaning is called as a pre-processing step. So this data pre-processing -pre having the subsection, the firstly we have to concentrate on data cleaning. Then second one is the data transformation, then the data reduction. So what it mean by the data transformation? Just like a China, China is very good for the production systems. They are giving up their products in a very uh, less cost as compared to the other uh, companies they are providing the same product. But the thing is that they are mentioning each and everything in their, their language. So this language is a Chinese language. So sometimes we are not able to interrupt or uh, we are not able to understand this one. So uniformity, we have to mention that this information we have to change in our own languages. So some type of transformation like a language support, like a data transformation support, the uniformity about the their formations, their, uh, uh, their units, all these things in the part of that data transformation. The next one is a data reduction. What will be this uh, section is important. Why it is one? Because the data reduction if because the raw data you have a raw data and this raw data size is suppose the zota byte so this zota byte you are not able to process directly with the one small standalone system so you have to make a chunks of it you have to reduce the that the, the different type of features with the data which are not important so you have to reduce it by the data reduction technique so this data reduction is applicable point of view as per your efficiency of your computer system. So this computer system is saying to you that computer ability, so that this data reductions is depending upon the factor, what you have as a resource, as a computer, accessories, as a processing power, as a register, cache, memory, all these things you have for processing that data. So this data reductions is based on the resource utilization based on the efficiency of your devices. So this data cleaning, uh, we have the data cleaning task. So this data cleaning, the data you have to analyze first. Then you have to check the quality of check and data duplicacies. You have to find out then data standardizations and the normalization. So this data standardization, suppose we want to convert. We have a different type of purchasing power of uh, we are making the system for the BI, so business intelligence, for the conversion of that one, that uh, product, what will be the next value of that product in the next two years. Uh, okay. So then we are saying that if you have the data in this type of features, then they are giving that the various type of uh, things, like in a, some they are giving in information in a dollar, some they are giving in a rupees, some they are giving the information in a euro. So many uh, that a rupees conversion, or you can say the many things you have, but you have to convert this into a, a standard one. So we are seeing that, okay, dollar is applicable in a worldwide graph or uh, in a everywhere for the currency transactions. 
So this currency transactions we converted that to peso also, that euro also, that the Malaysian dollar also, the Singapore dollar also in a simple American dollar support. So this US dollar is giving that one the standard one for the further uh, conversations. So this data standardizations are uh, techniques for creating the uniformity with the data. If the data is uniform, then the, the, that analysis part is somehow easier for us. So this is the important one, how to standardize the data. Then what we mean by the normalized data? So this normalization, uh, I given that work, one work to the students, and they are working in the mining department, okay? And they are doing the mineralogy classification. They want to identify the minerals on it. So minerals having the different properties, and the different property vector, the mineral property one, the mineral property two, and this property vector having the different type of ranges. The first mineral property having the ranges from zero to suppose 2000, okay? Then second mineral property having the range suppose zero to 200. So this 200, 0 to 200 and 0 to 2000 are a difficult task for analyzing the whole things in a one, uh, one 2D plane, one 2D array. Then we have to convert into a that normalized value. And this normalizing is saying that all the attribute, all the property vector, you have to convert into a particular range of the data. So we have converted. This all the data, the first data is a 1 to 2000, second data is, a, is a, from the 0 to 200. Then we are converting this into a like that one. This will be converted as a 0 to 100. So this all the features will give the answer in this range only. So we normalize sometimes our data for the betterment of the predictions, betterment of the analysis on it. So the next topics I, I want to cover because uh, this is the data missing the data handling. We are never blamed to the system. The system is saying that the some persons, the some uh, sources, they are providing the data to us. But the data may or may not be good or may or may not be complete. So this completeness we have to check first. If the someone have given that data to the one TB data they have provided. And apart from this one TB, suppose one GB data is incomplete. one. So directly, if you apply the any analysis, any learning, any classification, clustering and all, then definitely it will the difficult for the machine learner, how they will put this one GB incomplete informations with the data. So this incomplete informations we have to fill with the appropriate values. So this appropriate value are using that one for filling that one GB data, then this one TB data will be is nearly, you can say it is a complete, but it's not a complete one. So this nearly complete, we have to convert by using the incomplete data. So incomplete data to the complete conversions with the help of missing value handling techniques, missing or the garbage value handling techniques. So sometimes you got the result from the student or the surveyor, uh, the survey, the person they have done, and they placed the wrong information in that portion. So you have to find out how many wrong information they have already put with the data. Then you have to find out the, the which type of values we have to place in place of this uh, incomplete information or the garbage information. So this will be helpful for us, this method, the uh, missing data handling techniques, we can use it. So you can see easily this uh, information I already extracted from the worldwide graph. And this worldwide graph, I combined all these things, uh, the different type of uh, that uh, handling of the data. So my student, uh, the eighth semester student, uh, and I'm taking the machine learning subject also as an open elective uh, for the all branches. So I given that task, you find out uh, the particular area where you got uh, some missing values. And the data with a missing value, or you can see the data with a noisy data. So this missing value handling is different, it depending upon the variety of data you have. So which type of data you have, whether it is a categorical data, whether it is a discrete data, ranging data. So various type of data varieties. So data is a super class, you can say, but the data may be
your voice is not audible. Now I'm connected. Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Okay. Just wait, I'm connected with my hotspot also. So once I face uh, internet issues of the college, then automatically is. So, ma'am. Our screen is visible now, no? Yes, ma'am. Yes, so we are in that slide, how to handle the missing values. So I told earlier, because uh, that the missing value handling is not a generalized thing, okay? So the one method is applicable in a one data, it depending upon which type of data you are handling with your purposes. So this problem is statement because uh, that uh, we are saying that each and every thing is depending upon the variety of the data. That's why now it is a, it's still challenging because all these things is category of the NP hard problem. It's called a non-deterministic polynomial hard problem. So choosing of that appropriate method and 
selecting that those method for our data is a NP hard problem. So we will do and we will fit that particular
Yes, so here the exploratory data analysis we have done. So this particular tool we, can, we are using for this analysis purposes. This analysis we can do with the programming of R. This R programming is helpful for data analysis. So most of the time we are using this R programming, the Python, the visualization tool like a Tableau. All these things are important for the visualizations, for the doing the inside of the data conclusions we can draw easily with the R programming. Okay. So this is the way of the representation of the data. We all are mostly done with the 2D plots. Yeah. So this 2D plot is not only the one thing for visualizing the data. So we have multiple options for visualizing the things. The first one is a multi-level donut chart, angular and dot plot, that pie chart, sociograms, portional analysis, waterfall chart, phase diagram, cycle diagram, population param parameters, the radar diagrams, topographic map, semicircle, three-dimensional stream, and the box plot. So according to this box plot, this box plot is useful for outlet reductions. Yeah. And this is the cyclic diagram we are using in a BI system type of things because it is uh, converting this circle into a different type of sections for representing the data. The social graph also we are using and the plot. So you can use this uh, R language for representing this information of your data in a very effective way. Uh, then you will get the insight of that information because uh, the human perception, the human brain is not very much uh, active or recognize, uh, recognize easily the textual data, but they can recognize, they can understand easily the image or the diagram type of things easily. That's why once we convert our XLS, our database information into that type of things, the representations will be uh, good indications and good understanding to the end users. So this uh, problem understanding, you can prepare the data, how to that one. Firstly, you have to understand the, uh, the particular problem. That the problem understanding, you have to prepare the data preparation. Then you can do the modeling things. So many types of models, you can do the machine learning modeling, the statistical model. So these models are, you are fitting the, the things on your data for the that finding the patterns on it. Then you can evaluate that one. So here I have mentioned that a data visualization you can do with the help of R coding. You are that uh, the SAP is also there, the Python is there, the Tableau analysis will there. So this data uh, uh, visualizations we have a many more things for visualizing the data. So this uh, is a little step in our ETA projects. So there are the various exploratory tools, Python and R. So enterprise applications, BI, SAP, Tableau to perform the ETA on opting this one. So what we have on this type of variables you have. So this variable or you can see the attribute of the data for identifying these attributes. We have the multiple columns and this is the one class column or you can see it's an output variable. So this output variable is for the mapping of the data into this one. Okay. So this map variable having different type of features. Suppose you have just that is a 10 variables you have you want map so this mapping from this 10 features to that particular class variable the features you have with the which varieties you have so this qualitative variable you can have or this is the qualitative variables you can have so this qualitative variables speaks the one value that are the name of the labels and the types of qualitative uh, variables you can do that one in a nominal scale, ordinal scale. You have to find out which uh, things, which variables, variety you have, whether this is a qualitative or a quantitative variables. You can do the discrete variable you have, discrete type of data, or the continuous type of data. If you have the class variable as continuous, values. so this continuous value you, you can. Think like that, you have this continuations of value, and you are not able to fit that the simple classification model on it. You have to say something that you have to predict are the categories, values we, you have, the continuous variables treatment you can do with this class variable. So, this dimensionality of the data sets, either you can do 
the univariant analysis with your data or you can do the bivariant analysis or you can do the multivariant data analysis. So univariant measurement need on one variable per subject, bivariant measurement need on the two variable per subject. Actually, uh, I'm unable to understand why today this problem is again and again. No, it was No, but I'm not being comfortable for this network issues and all. Maybe network issues are happening, and that is unpredictable. Every day is not like that, but today till morning, now we are facing this problem. And uh, for that administrator also for that network, he just posted today the network issue is there. So. Yeah, sweet. Which slide I I was in that slide, I think so. Bivariant analysis. Yeah. So this is univariant analysis we can do with our data. Then this is a bivariant because we have a two uh, that uh, attributes. Then the purpose of this univariant data analysis is that uh, the univariant analysis is a descriptive one. Then the bivariate analysis determines the empirical relations. Empirical relations, it means the effects of one in respect of others. So that, that multivariate analysis we can do with the among we have a targeted variable and many more attributes they are contributing for mapping of that class variables. So here the univariate, bivariate, and the multivariate, this is the most important things. You have to analyze your data. Then you have to find out which type of analysis you want to do, either univariate or bivariate and multivariate. So this one variable attribute is very easy because we can uh, use the XLS only for uh, mapping our data. And we can find out this by using a box plot for finding the which type of outliers present in our data. So this normally we want to, uh, to take this type of curve with our data. So this average things, the dispersions of the data, and we can apply our methodology in this sections only. And sometimes the sections which are in this sections and that section in a higher side and a lower side, we can say like that they are our outliers for our data. And sometimes we also face a particular problem. Our data is a skewed one. Okay, so this is skewed one. It means the data is not dispersed in an overall span, but it is either it is a left hand side skewed or the 
right hand right hand side is skewed so my suggestions for analyzing the data firstly you will map the data in a 2d plot find out whether your data is a skewed one or not if your data is a skewed one then definitely your learning your training your all these things will not will not go in a good directions so you have to to map you have to convert your data like that is a bell shape or you can say the homogeneous distribution normal distribution with your data then you can apply any type of algorithm it will give the good results to you so this uh, more than three variable then it is called a multivariate one variable it is called a univariate and third one is a bivariate okay so the difference between this multivariate uh, bivariate and univariate involving single variable here involving two variable does not deal with the cause or the relationship the deal with the cause or the relationship why it is here because it depends upon the only the one parameters one attributes yeah and here we have the multiple values but here it is a two values so the cause and the relationship is important so the major purpose of this uh, univariate analysis is to describe the the major purpose of the bivariate analysis is to explain the central tendency we can explore this is the statistical evaluations we can do i think some of the lectures you already attended in this section how to get the information of the central tendency the central tendency is you can say we can apply the aggregated operations on it and we can we are applying this operation on the group of data and this group of data will give the one information so if the one mean information is appropriate for giving the information then why we are worried about the whole data this averaging factor this central tendency data will represent the one value represent your whole data okay then second one analyze of the two variable simultaneously and we are working on the correlation i will show the one case study in front of you all how you can calculate the correlations and this correlation also the r python matlab and uh, you are that java also any uh, any tools and techniques you can use for finding the correlation why the correlation is important because we have to find out the relation between two variable whether they are whether they are a positive correlation negative correlations or no correlation is there for finding the appropriate values appropriate variables for our analysis purposes yeah so this r code uh, i have done for the this histogram mapping here we have taken the values as a air quality index uh, data and uh, then so i will execute if i have a sufficient time for this uh, four executions or i will give this code to you yeah so i am sharing my case study in front of you all this wait my slide is visible is it okay yes ma'am yeah this is a real time case study we have done for the data preparations in our yeah so we have done uh, the gis and spatial uh, data analysis we have done because sometimes we are working with the data we are getting the data from the sensor system sometimes we are getting the data from uh, the geo geos spatial informations so varieties of data we have but the processing on it will depending upon the from where you are getting this information so we got this information from the gis support system so the, the gis is a global uh, is a graphical information system is a computer system for capturing storing uh, checking and displaying the data related to the positioning of our surface because the map type of things we want to do with the data and latitude and the long, longitude informations we have then we want to organize our data in a different ways okay so gis can use any information that includes location and this location can be expressed in a many different ways such as latitude and longitude address or the zip code so the power of the user friendly gis visualization is the form of thematic illustrated map helps everyone to understand the situations in the better way so application of gis include the mapping hot spot analysis because uh, last two years back we suffered a lot for the uh, that uh, covid 19 and all and we have done this study in that durations 
for identifying as per the latitude and the longitude of the positioning system and we did this analysis for the better analysis of the corona cases so this prediction of the corona virus cases is done using the time series analysis we have used the one model is called a prediction model we uh, already told either we can do the statistical analysis we can do the causal effect we can do the causal uh, causal analysis or we can use the time series analysis on the data so s arima model this model is derived uh, 20 to 30 years back but still this model is uh, appropriate for analyzing the data for predicting the unseen values so s arima models are widely used in statistical approaches for time series analysis for the forecasting what do you mean by the forecasting forecasting means we want to see we want to predict the unseen values suppose we want to predict the that uh, what will be the value of the next today temperature because suddenly the weather is changed now the humidity is very high so we want to plan something for the ac repairing for the cooler fittings and all so this predictions or the forecasting the one predicted model is saying that tomorrow definitely the that temperature will go that 40 uh, 40 degrees celsius so we have to plan based on this predictions so but we haven't seen yet but we want to predict so this is time, uh, this type of things we can do as a forecasting models so this is special data mining techniques we have used so data mining is automated process of discovering the pattern we already studied we have to see the particular patterns on the data in which particular portion the data is high and all so this the data mining is the automated process of discovering the pattern in the data special data mining is application of data mining techniques to so special data with the end objective of the pattern in a geography so we did this forecasting with uh, that uh, geography information gis information and that's why we need a uh, two basic informations on it the latitude longitude address and the zip codes of it so the that data analysis in the gis we use this software this is a free software all of you can use this software for many purposes of it and this is a very good software for visualizing the map map uh, creations and for uh, that localizations as per the spatial information you have so machine learning has been a core component of the spatial gis and this we can do the classification we can do clustering we can do and the predictions we can do so the selection and the representation of data mining for the geo data used due to the range of the file formats understanding of the information represented in the files selection and the transformation of spatial attribute because i already told you have to find out the variables which type of variables you have whether you have a continuous variable whether you have a discrete variables whether you have a categorical variable so this you have to find out first so our uh information is the information about the spatial attributes from the non spatial attributes so the data which are stationary only what it mean by the stationary data normally we are working with the data with the changes in respect of the time is a certain type of ordering okay so this data you can see the stationary but we we, we want we are not able to predict sometime high sometime low and the date the nature of the data we are not able to predict so the data having the pattern but the pattern is not giving the significant to us so this is the random type of things so in our project in my project in a, that psd time is a eeg signal data so this eeg signal data is highly random but the ecg signal is a data is a somehow it is a Uh, giving the some stationary type of things so the that selection the ecg is a firstly we can select the stationary analysis that we can do for that one for the non stationary analysis so this uh, motivation for us for doing this case study so understanding the impact of the covid in india need for data representation understanding the trend of the covid so the so as to take the preventive measures accordingly forecasting of the future cases to take precautionary step and raising the cases of the covid so to do the study you must understand about the spatial data mining to study about the gis and its applications then understanding using the gis and spatial data mining map corona virus cases to analyze the corona cases by finding out the clustering and the hotspot as representation that's why we have used the data visualization tool over here so here we have taken the global database 
So uh, anyone can take the click of it if you want to work on this type of database. This is a glo global database is easily you can extract from worldwide back. So this is the natural earth. So description of that, the public domain vector, raster data set supported by the NACIS and this open data archive and the uh, UNE environmental data we have. So many type of uh, online repositories support for uh, this uh, type of analysis. So we are a programmer, we are a developer, we are an analyzer, but we are sometimes we are not a uh, ground data collectors. So this ground information or the survey is done by the person from the life science departments, from the medical science departments. They gather the information in a variety of ways and they store the data in a, in a different type of names. And this data they are providing in a free or a public domain for the research purposes for analyzing this. So the process model, you can map it, you can analyze and you can predict. So the tools and technologies we have used uh, in uh, this case studies are the library we have used. The Pandas is a software library written for the Python programming language for the data manipulations and analysis. Then second one is a Geo Pandas we have used is open source project to make working with the geospatial data analysis in a Python easier. Then the softwares we have used as a spider is an open source cross-platform integrated development environment ID for scientific programming in the Python language. And ArcGIS uh, we have used for the online cloud-based mapping and analysis solutions. So these combinations we have used with our data because uh, the one good research is saying that you are not uh, uh, combined uh, or you cannot extract the, all the good information from the one software. So firstly, once you start your research work, you have to identify which type of tools, techniques, supports are already available. Then you can uh, take a mock type of things with your data and see the, uh, the effects on it. Then you can select the particular topics. Because normally as a researchers, we did a one type of mistake. We select the topics without bothering about this, which type of supports is already present in a world like that. So my suggestion is for as a, as a researchers, firstly, you have to find out the problem, but do not say this is the exact problem or you do, do not uh, exactly map your problem directly. Firstly, you have to find out which type of tools and techniques support it in that area. You have to study the more research articles on that area. Then uh, only you will get the particular answers. So this are the GIS type of concepts we got from the applied geology energy department. In our institute, uh, I'm working with this uh, department. We are the, as an IT person, or a service provider, and we are using the different type of tools. But are the GIS, I haven't uh, uh, heard this uh, word. So I just uh, handshake with the applied geology department for mapping type of things. Then they suggested me, ma'am, why you are using this one? You use this ArcGIS. So this ArcGIS is a cloud-based mapping and analysis uh, tool. Uh, and uh, this is a free tools. You can use it. So this, the, the data preparation, our theme was that. So this data preparation, the first step involves the preparation of geo database of all state of the India. Then firstly, state-wise uh, daily data from March 2020 containing the details of the total cases, active cases, recovered cases, death cases we have uh, downloaded from the site. The data obtained is a type list and for the spatial analysis, this needs to be converted to a geo data frame. So this is the constraint. Okay. So you have to convert this data set into a geo data frame. So this type of tool familiarity, you have to understand because just like a Python, once you are using the Python, then the data you can use as import as a .csv file you can import. If you want to work with the R programming, yeah. So this R programming is saying that you can use the data as a CSV is called, called a comma separated value file. If you are using a Vecca tool, Vecca is also one type of visualization tool for the purposes. Then you can use the R.ARFF file format. The full form of this ARFF is an attribute register file format. So only the difference is that as a software engineer, I will suggest you just find out the which type of uh, uh, that convergence you are using, which type of software you're using, and how to convert the XLS into a geodata frame, XLS into a .csv, XLS into a .arff type of things. So this we have represented the data in a, uh, uh, in a 
Chhattisgarh data or the all India uh, states data we have. So how many confirmed cases, how many active cases, how many cured cases, and how many death cases we have represented. So this is converted into a geo data frame. So can you see easily? The previous one was the simple Excel file. Then we are converting as for the geometry here. So this geometry is giving that one. You have to take the data as per the latitude and the longitude informations, and you can create the index. So this data you can not directly put with the GIS arc, but this data you can put directly into the arc GIS. So this all this uh, results we have extracted from the arc GIS. So this coronavirus cases in India is showing over here. So this is a better visualization because the human are not able to understand the textual things in a very easy manner. But in a pictorial representation or the visual effects, they can easily extract the useful information inside of the data. So this is the result of the mapping of the GIS. So map wise, we have shown that results, the recovered cases, the death cases, so spatial data mining analysis, the coronavirus cases done. So GIS is a new global death technology, uh, is a health technology for mapping and tracking the infectious disease pattern in a space, COVID-19 incidences mapped uh, and uh, spatial autocorrelation analysis have been done. So different type of that uh, indexes we have used as a statistical one. So this uh, Morgan S index, I told earlier because you have to find out the significance of your data. So the significance of the data, you have to take the index values. So market index values, if your data is a skewed one, then definitely it will not, uh, you are not able to fit the particular models on it. So you have to firstly find out the bell shape with your data. So this bell shape is saying that you have to organize your data and the, you have to find out the statistical things with your data, the P value, the Z, Z values, all these things. Then you can find out the significant areas for your analysis part of it. So this uh, we have used the model index value is our case and which is a positive and indicates the tendency towards clustering. The Z score and the P values are measured for the statistical significance which indicates this. Okay, so hotspot analysis we have done. So which area have uh, we got a maximum cases. So this hotspot analysis also done with the help of that ARC GIS. So first clustering is determined using the Morgan's index. Then on the basis of the hotspot analysis is performed. Then hotspot analysis are area that show statistically high tendencies to the cluster specifically. Then this is a state-wise analysis. So we have the just data I have shown to you here. Yeah? And these all analysis we have done with the help of Python, with the help of ArcGIS. So cases in the worst affected states are shown over here. So proposed model for COVID-19 predictions. So we have fitted also the one time series model. So I told, I explained something about the s -Anima model. This s -Anima model is a mathematical model. And the full form of this is an autoregressive integrated moving average model. And this model is we are using for, suppose I just want to predict the next value, the today's value of are day after tomorrow values for the COVID cases in Kerala. So this we can do with the help of this S anima model. So different type of trends with the data. Different type of trends. All of you please mute yourself. So this time series uh, components uh, are that. So we have to find the which type of trends with our data, which type of seasonal component with our data, and which type of irregular component with our data. So this time series data is saying that we have mapped that uh, 2020 year, the 5th, 7th, 9th, 11th, then 21, 1, 3. So in that time, the cases are more high here. Yeah? So we have to do the analysis on that one. So time series analysis cannot be done but the data is non-stationary. So you have to find out the data should be the stationary one. So we will first plot the ACF is finding the errors on it, the fitted models. So there are the two type of different time series models you can use, ARIMA model and as ARIMA models. So 
So this is the Python code for predicting one, how to make a predictions by using or doing the forecast. You want to forecast next unseen values by fitting that model with your data. And you have to find out this and this result, this outcome we got with our analysis, with our case study. So this actual cases and this is the predicted cases. So predicted cases as per our models, so they are the nearby this one. Yeah, so the deviation is not very high. It means we can say our model is fitted, good fitted accuracy we are getting because the deviations from the actual and the deviation from the predicted it is called the residual. Yeah. So this residual is quite low. That's why we can say our model is good enough for this particular case. But we can't say this is applicable for all. You have to convert, you have to prepare your data, you have to say whether it is a stationary, non-stationary type of things will be there. Then, then only you will fit the particular model. So our model obtained is 95.3763 accuracy with this. So one case study I have shown to you all. Uh, my one student is uh, just uh, attached. Uh, Avilash, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes. Shubhima, he is my BTEC student. Okay. And I will show the one another case study. Then uh, we will we will demonstrate the working of Tableau in front of you all. Okay. So how to install it? Uh, then how to use it? So the student will help me because I'm facing lots of problem of that uh, uh, this network issues. I just informed me because they are facing this trouble. He just joined with me. Okay, now. Sure. So after this second case study, Abhilash, I will hand over to you. Yes. Yeah. So uh, Abhilash, which case study you are showing? Uh, Ma'am, the Raipur and Bilai uh, well data set. Okay. So uh, you start your the how to install the Tableau and all, then you work on it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Second in our case study we have done. The correlation, because this is the thing, uh, we have to prepare the data, then we can find out the relation between the two attributes. Here we are doing the, the bivariate analysis or we can do the multivariate analysis. Someone raised some questions. Uh, we will uh, give the answer after presentation. Dr. Atul, is it okay? Ma'am, should I start my presentation? Uh, Abhilash, just after this uh, this case study, you will start, okay? I'm sharing my slide, huh? Is my slide is visible, Abhilash? No, ma'am. It's not coming. I'll just wait. Now it's okay. Yes, ma'am. So the first case study we have done uh, with the help of that COVID cases. And second case study we have done with the correlation, the statistical things we can apply with the data. The data preparations we have to find out. We can do that one, the univariant analysis we can do, the bivariant analysis and the multivariant analysis we can do. So the correlation of the physiochemical parameters and the major ions present in the groundwater because the water is the most important thing nowadays and we are facing the problem in a summer season also the quality of the waters and all. 
So we did the one case study, and uh, this case study I did with my MTech scholar, and see she prepared that one. She we have not collected the data directly from that uh, sources. We got the data from the applied geology department, and they have uh, done this study on the RIPOR. So this study involves the analysis of the physiochemical parameters like pH value, PC value, TDS value, TH, TA, and the major ions. Uh, with this. So that data visualization, data discretization, and correlation part with this data we have done. So this is the data visualization helps in getting the depth knowledge regarding the presence of the parameters and the major ions across the different locations. Then the data discretizations because I already told you have to discretize your data. If the data is a normalized one, then it is easy for understanding because all the data should be in a homogeneous way. The representations of the range of the data is good, then the analysis will be easier for us. So this data discretization has been done for the bringing the value of the parameters into a bounded scale. And this uh, easy, the analysis of the data as compared to the data having values of various ranges. Then lastly, we have done the correlations has been done to understand how the presence of one parameter affects the presence of or absence of another parameters. So this data visualization uh, using ArcGIS for the calcium, the values across the different regions of the right code is presented. Then uh, this uh, right value across the different regions of the right code is presented by using the GIS, ArcGIS tool. So can you see the very good tool is there and we are we don't know about this tools the ArcGIS and this is a, one of the most important tools in the area of that metrologies and the applied geologies the metallurgy department also they are using for the metal identifications and all for the mapping of the location based monitoring they want to do with this type of tools. So the values of the each and every parameters and each and every dominating uh, values we are represented over here with the help of ArcGIS. Then the data pre-processing, uh, we told that uh, we have uh, some type of missing values with our data. So this data set, so this data set uh, some having the missing values which were needed to be handled in order to apply the correlations for the features. There are the numerous methods to handle the missing values and uh, we uh, shown that uh, uh, representations, the method of imputation method. So imputation means filling the missing value with a certain number. For a more logical outcomes, usually statistical measures like statistical measures like mean, median, or mode has been used. And we took a mean of value of the column containing the missing value and then filled with the missing values with the mean. Then we can do did that uh, data discretizations. So for <laughs> that data discretization is a technique for transferring a large number of data values into a smaller ones, making the data interpretations and the management easier. It is used to scale the different attribute values within a bond scale. And we have used a k-mean discretization method here and uh, for uh, as an unsupervised discretized values. So this parameters before performing the discretizations, then we observe the adjoining figures. It can be seen that the value of parameters have a varying range of pH is ranged from the 7 to 8, while EC is ranged from the 250 to 150. So this will give the better uh, interpretations about the data once we discretize it. So physiochemical pa parameters after performing the discretizations, this looks uh, that one. It can be seen that the parameters have been given indicates from 1 to 4 and the values of the parameters like between 0 to 20. So the correlations, the whether the all the features, like the different type of features we have uh, with our data, we can use that features of uh, this one, the, the data having the property vectors and the properties having the different types of uh, components with the water and how the components affect to each other. So this we can do for this purpose, the correlation analysis has been done. So after this correlation, we got uh, that answers. 
correlation is a mechanism used to identify the strength the of relationship between the features and it is a statistical method for determining how one parameter moves or change with respect to the another so bivariate analysis also you can do these correlations for multivariate analysis also you can do with the correlations so positive correlations they are the two features we are having the positive correlations it means if the values of one feature is increasing in scenario the value of other features will also tend to raise in the similar scenario the second one is a negative correlations if there are two features which are having the negative correlation it means that if the the value of one feature increasing as in a scenario the scenario the value of other feature will tend to reduce a similar scenario then no correlation when the two features are said to be in no correlation it means the value of two features are independent so this uh, correlation matrix we got uh, and it is showing that the ph to ph definitely the full correlations we will get so you can see easily over here this value the ph to ph definitely it will give the answer 1 so this answer the minus 1 to 1 you will get for the correlation vectors so this we have done and uh, this uh, chart we extracted from by using the python excuse me ma'am yes ma'am your slide is invisible um uh, just wait Not visible. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So we find out that the data discretization result. We got the data discretizations, and based on this discretizations, I think this slide visible or not? Previously, this slide visible was there or not? Yes, ma'am. It was. It was. So after correlations, I think it was not. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So after this correlations matrix, we got the data visualization. Helps in getting the depth of the knowledge. So this we got as for that correlation matrix. So correlations either we we have a positive correlation, negative correlation, or no correlations. So you can see easily this chart. The pH to pH, you got the positive correlation uh, is a correlation because pH to pH definitely the same thing will you will get, and the answer of this correlations you will get minus one two. Plus one. So this is the range of that uh, minus one to plus one is a correlation value. So if you apply any type of tools and techniques on it for getting the correlation values, so this is the range of it minus one to plus one. So this EC to EC, you can see the minus type of things you can get the positive. So this TH and EC, you can say this is the positive correlation. So this TH value will affect to the EC values. Okay. So so the TA and EC again. is a high correlation the 0.77 so this positive correlation is indicating here the ta to C, ec pa and ec to ph is a is a negative correlation is there but normally once we are taking this answers so greater than 0.5 we are considering as something the variables are related to with each other by using the correlation factors so this answers we extracted from uh, that the python tools the python uh, environment the correlation graph of physiochemical parameters so you can see easily the the relations on it the ec versus ph the ec the tds versus ph so this is another representations uh, we have used uh, for our purposes for visualizing the data so correlation results parameters showing the negative correlations on the ec and ph tds and ph th and ph parameters showing the positive correlations on it so parameters showing no correlation as a cold be Uh, variables नहीं है जिसपे कोई relation नहीं है everyone having either positive or negative correlations so if the parameters that have no correlation so better you discard this for uh, variables from the database for the the dimensionality reductions so this correlation analysis is helpful for selecting the features also for making the relation also for uh, the the showing the uh, the understanding point of view which type of thing will be change the variable to variable in a in a fix okay so 
this is the second case study I have done for the data preparations. Okay, Abhilash, we don't have too much time. Yeah. Yes. So we have the next fifteen minutes only. So you yes. just you just explain the working of the tableau. Yes, ma'am. I'll share my. So, if anyone having the questions, all of you please post your questions in the post uh, that chat box. So, meantime, these presentations, I am uh, seeing your questions. Ma'am, is my screen visible? Uh, yeah, it's coming. Just wait. I'll stop sharing now. Yeah. Ma'am, shall I start? Yeah, please. Uh, okay, hello and good uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Abhilaj Baswas, uh, IT six semester, uh, NIT Raipur, and today I'll be showing you how to use the Tableau online platform. So first of all, we'll just uh, search in Google for Tableau online, and we'll click the first link that shows up. Now it's just taking time to load. I have already made my account uh, for Tableau and this gives me about 14 days of free trial and since this site uses cookies I won't be able to uh, use multiple accounts so I'll just sign in to my existing account. Now it's taking a little time now you can see I have three sites so I'll go to my current site. So this is my home page or my dashboard. As you can see, these are my previous works. And here you can uh, go to explore and you can check your folder, upload uh, your files in your uh, customized folders, as well as you can add your users to your projects. Like I have added my some of my friends uh, to my project and they can access it as much as I can. Since I'm using the free version, so there will be certain limitations. Anyway, let's get on with it. So first of all, I need to make a new project. So I'll uh, name it Bell Data I put and we like and just click on create. Now it has been created. Uh, now I'll go to explore. As you can see, my well data has been created. Now here, I'll go to new and create a new workbook completely. Now I have my uh, boilerplate of sorts ready. Now I need to export my data from uh, my computer to Tableau. So my data looks kind of like this. It has about se seven to eight variables, which are uh, serial number, longitude, latitude, location, elevation, parapet, diameter, water level before uh, rainfall and water level after rainfall. Now to upload this, uh, simply click on upload, locate your file and click open. As you can see, it has been uh, uploaded here. Now uh, in this table section, this line of distinction basically divides, the, uh, divides our parameters into dimensions and measures as well as the geo dimensions so for dimensions we have location and measure names and for measures we have diameter elevation parapet serial number water level water level after rainfall and our own data set as well as the measure values and our uh, geological uh, our geo dimensions are latitude and longitude and uh, now i'll uh, now, basically, Tableau gives us about these many data visualization options. First of all, I like to I'd like to begin with the symbol map. 
So for symbol map, we would need latitude and longitude. So we'll drag latitude uh, dimension and put it to rows. Then we'll drag longitude uh, to columns. As you can see, our map is ready. And there's a symbol in the center of Chhattisgarh, which is basically the region of Raipur and Bilai, consisting the region of Raipur and Bilai. Now, in order to make it more distinguished, we'll take location, which is uh, which was our dimension, and we'll drag it and drop it to detail. When we do it, we can see a small cluster uh, being formed. And now I'll just zoom it a little, a little more. And here we have our different locations. Now, as you can see in the tooltip, we have location, we have latitude, we have longitude. In order to make it more detailed, we'll drag our measures and keep dropping it into the detail option. We'll take parapet and drop it into detail. Take water level and drop it into detail. We'll also take uh, elevation and diameter. Now, there is a certain problem with Tableau that it uh, chooses the default measure as sum. So you will be shown the same values for all our symbols. So to change that, go to measure and change it to maximum or minimum according to your liking. Since I'm uh, preferring the maximum, range, uh, maximum amount of our values, so I'll set them to maximum. So my values have been set. As you can see, uh, as I hover on the symbols, my tooltip has updated and it has, and it is more detailed now. For and to make it a little more uh, detailed or basically a little more distinguishable, we can consider one of the diamond, uh, one of the measures and drag it. Suppose I take diameter and drag it to color. Now you can see the symbols have been arranged uh, and the color uh, intensities have been arranged accordingly to their values. I'll just change it to maximum again. So now you can see since I have chosen diameter for my color palette, so uh, the darkest will be diameter 5.9 and the lightest will be diameter 1.6 or even less uh, 1.520. Uh, so basically the colors are directly proportional to the values of uh, of my diameter. Now to make it a little more interactive, what I can do is I can add animations to it. So for animations, uh, we'll just have to take a dimension and drag it to the pages option. As we can see, the pages, uh, the locations have been added to the pages. And here is our uh, play button for uh, the uh, for for the animation so i'll just hit play and it will automatically get shifted to the regions i want to show you guys and it will go on until it uh, passes through the entire sheet so this was all about symbol maps next i can show you uh, another example, let's consider box plots. So for box plots, I'll choose location as my columns. And since uh, we can uh, look for the requirements from the show me option, so I'll just hover to the box plot and as I can see, it requires zero or more dimensions and one or more measures. So basically, at le uh, we need at least one measure. Let my measure be diameter. So I'll put diameter to it and change this from uh, change this from sum to maximum and then hit on box plot. So as we can see, our box plot is basically ready, but we need 
for all the mutations. So I'll drag it to here. The box plot, however, isn't uh, any distinguishable. It would be if we had used continuous data sets, but since it is discrete, so we cannot tell whether it is uh, uh, whether it, it has uh, upper whiskers or lower whiskers. So for this, I can show you my uh, another box plot that I have already made. This was made using the COVID data set or uh, the worldwide COVID data set. Let me sort it to increasing order. It's taking a little time. So, uh, so as long as it is being uploaded, let's just scroll through another important data visualization technique, which is tree map. Tree map is basically a hierarchical uh, way of uh, data visualization technique where the size of the rectangles are again proportional to our values. So for this, we need one or more dimension and one to two measures. So for dimension again, we'll choose location. And for measures, let's take diameter and drag it to detail, as well as elevation. And also, let's take diameter, color, and hit on tree maps. OK, so our tree map is again ready. And we'll uh, just change this to maximum and again sort it. So, yeah, I guess it has, now it is okay. So as we can see the darkest and the largest uh, rectangle, which is Batari, the location, it has the maximum diameter and elevation is around 654.6. And the lightest is uh, railway colony Shakri Nagar, which uh, whose diameter is 1.3 and elevation is 316.9. Now our it, uh, our box plot is ready basically. So for this one, I have chosen the uh, the countries uh, the countries as well as the total positive cases. Let me just scroll it through, and here you can see this is India. Now. Since my box plot is here, we can see the tooltip, which tells us about uh, a little about our box plot that has been formed. So as you can see, the upper whisker, it's, uh, it's around 42 million. And the lower whisker is zero, since I've chosen the axis to be the lower whisk whisker. I'm sorry for the network issues. Anyway, uh, the upper hinge you can see here represents the 75th percentile of our data and the lower hinge represents the 25th percentile of our data. So, and uh, our median is around 10 million, which is here. So yeah, that was basically about the box plots. Also our outliers are visible. I don't know if they are visible on my screen. As you can see, the outliers are lying beyond the upper whisker of our box plot. So this was all about box plots. So, uh, since I have a little to no time uh, left with me, so I'll just show you guys one more data. Uh, yeah, so I need to update this again. So we have it here again. Now, finally, let's go with, uh, let's say uh, I'll go with the pie chart. Okay, so for pie chart, 
first of all let's just take locations and add it to detail so all our location is there and then let's just take diameter and drop it to size now you can see my pie chart is available and which is and its requirements were one to two measures and one or more at least one dimension i'll just hit on create and now my pie chart is ready however it's not quite visible so i'll fit it to my view entire view so my pie chart is ready and the angles have been also proportion uh, the angles are proportional to the diameters maximum diameters here you can cannot change the measure of the size because the sum should come out to be a constant number which is our uh, which will create our circle for the pie chart however you can keep adding the details suppose it's parapet or let's say water level before the rainfall or water level after the rainfall and as i hover through my uh, each uh, part of the pie chart i can see the uh, i can see my tooltip changing according to the different uh, locations we can also add animations here according to locations is drag location to pages however it will only show the individual pie charts and it will keep changing but the sizes will be again proportional uh anyway i guess i am facing issues so that will be it from my side uh thank you guys yeah thank you abhilash he demonstrated the one tool because these are free available tools the public uh, uh, also but this is a costly tool and you can take the trial version of it yeah so this tool is uh, you can explore the this is the best uh, data visualization tool the tableau okay so we introduce uh, the r basics the some of the pythons also uh, actually one and half hour is not sufficient for demonstrating the all all workings so from my sides over so some of the students they, they raise their questions so dr atul kumar sharma please tell your question टोटल पॉपुलेशन सब्जेक्ट actually depending upon the size of the data the population it doesn't mean this is a similar for each and every type of projects but normally we are taking the you know, we are doing the sampling on it because we want to select the random samples from the data and sometimes we do the analysis of the sequential also so this will depend upon the the what, what will be the size of your population and uh, which type of information you want to uh, to extract as a sample so this sampling you can do in a many ways okay so pspp just like uh, you are uh, that a particular tool uh, just uh, spss tool is there for sampling the data so many uh, online tools is available how to create a meaningful samples from the populations okay so we can't say the suitable data points <laughs> uh, we can't quantify it yeah any other questions Yeah, Dr. Sam. Oh, yes. I would like to know the the data discretization. Yes, sir. How does it affect the correlation? How does it affect the correlation? It's a correlation. Is it yeah. really needed for uh, conducting correlation analysis? Sir, actually, sometimes we are getting the same type of answers for after uh, that uh, discretization also, because without discretization also the correlation is giving the same type of answers to us. Yeah. but the purpose of that discretization is the different type of scaling of the data with the us and we want to map this data in a uniform way in a particular scales then 
the that uh, the uniformity we are maintaining with the data yeah because normally the correlation uh, should be uh, like if we change the data then correlation will be affected and discretion doesn't really changes the data it only you yeah, know yeah but yeah. sir we can increase the efficiency of the system by using it if the yeah, data yeah, visualization, visual, visualization is better i agree yeah uh, but the per, per se the correlation doesn't change yeah right? definitely co uh, co correlation doesn't change okay. but uh, if uh, we are have a data is uh, like in a one to 3000 uh, very values and mm -hmm. we are mapped in the discretize as a whole data into 1 to 100 is there mm -hmm. definitely the processing speed the time taking the all these things definitely it will uh, take the in a different oh, yeah. way yeah no because uh, normally as you know i am a very established scientist we had been we really avoid that, uh, playing with the uh, correlation data because uh, extreme outliers we may reject but other than that we don't want to do uh, you know much you know um, uh, tingling with the data yeah yeah so when i heard your presentation i got interested but yeah. so okay let's uh, keep it up ma'am but uh, yeah. but the, the first thing is that sir the discretization is required for the that the distributions we want to spread in a normal yeah, i agree markets. i agree i agree homogeneity we want to go, to convert with the data otherwise we have a skewed type of things we are understanding because of various type of things uh, that variations on the data and all so sometimes it's quite a difficult once we discretize then we are able to understand the uh, yeah things is going in a one good directions for us sir you are new type chimi uh just to you you are new yeah, yeah okay ma'am yeah that's i got it so please keep it up yeah actually i am a basically a computer science engineer statistic is my interest so okay. I, yeah two to three years uh, i started this uh, data science for fact the hypothesis the sampling then all these okay. things what okay. are the goals of the statistic in that uh, for analyzing the data very correct very correct i am environmental scientist and yeah, so you know uh, for me uh, i got immediately interested how come you are <laughs> trying to tangle with the data but ultimately i could see it's not only it's only visualization too mm -hmm. and you are making them more more presentable and understandable so yeah. that's okay keep it up. okay yeah, actually sir the the data is size of the zota data peta data size so understanding or the one one look the interpretation is very powerful so we have used the python r tableau data miners many tools are available then yeah. the one look we understand the data that's our purpose very good very good okay ma'am yeah thank you sir Uh, yes, you should, should be actually your voice is some breaking. Uh, ma'am, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. yeah, I'm just asking the public if they have any questions in the previous two. Uh, can you repeat your question or text your question? just text your question and i'm really sorry for that uh, network issues today we faced a lot that can be okay ma'am i think ma'am uh, the particular participants don't have any query we don't have any can ma'am can we go ahead to the close of the session can uh, can you repeat uh, if other they are listening the subhi ma'am voice please repeat for ma me i'm expecting you are actually i'm using the id of subhi ma'am okay so uh, i interact with the over call so i'm using her for my so me okay ma'am i'm just saying uh, like i think the participants don't have any query can we go ahead with the closure yeah yeah no problem yeah if uh, still they have a queries i'm just typing my email id over here They just send me the mail. Yeah, this is my mail ID, and uh, I'm working uh, with the uh, applied data sciences. Yeah, so I I'm still working with the mining department, applied geology department. So as an IT engineer, my role is that to fit the particular models, find out the missing values, fit the the particular math mathematics. Uh, 
and for finding the trends, patterns on it, this is my hand. So if you have any type of questions related to this, you can mail me in my email ID. Thank you so much, ma'am, for providing this is your email ID. I hope anybody uh, having any issue or uh, they do want to have any query uh, answered by you, then definitely get in touch with you. Or you can even get, uh, get in touch with us so we can provide the details about you um, so we can start. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for having <laughs> this session with us. Yes. Uh, this was a great interactive session, and thank you uh, to your student as well, Ms. Rikwar. For um, uh, with the tabulation section, I need to say that you white dress, and um, I can really help you out uh, in some of the other way because you are facing an issue. It was great having you, ma'am, and uh, uh, the whole team, the CIT team, and uh, 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 CHPQ along with AICT team. Mm -hmm. Please have you here. Very, uh, like, very pleased to have you here in the session. Hope to have further more association like this with you. Thank you so much. Uh, I just want to one pick with you all, if possible. Dr. Piyush, sir, yeah, yeah, okay. should we also? Abhilash, could you take a one pick of us and send to me? Abhilash, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma yeah, just take a pick. If uh, maximum participants are joined, the 51 participants is showing. So, if possible, all of you please on your cameras for keeping the record with me. <laughs> it should be. Please on your camera if possible. Yeah. Yes, Vikas, good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. You are doing your uh, research work or you are faculty work? I am faculty, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Done, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Shubhi, ma'am. Uh, Ma'am, I would request you to share uh, this presentation with us so we can share it with the participants. Yeah, no problem. I will share. Thank you so much, Ma'am. Have a great day. Yeah, thank you. We have a uh, post Sir, the, can, yeah, can I exit? Can I exit? Yeah, Ma'am. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Namta Ma'am has posted the question and feedback link. Uh, please copy the first link and feedback link as we are running short of time. So I request you to uh, like copy it as early as you can so that we can go ahead with the next session. Nita Ma'am is posting um, the links again. I just want to say that we are running for the time. Uh, the next session will be starting very soon. Uh, within the next 13 minutes, we will be going ahead with the uh, next session. So I would request please uh, copy the first link and feedback link. 